Chapter Nineteen of Finn the Wolfhound by Alec John Dawson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nineteen: The Domestic Lure. As Finn drew closer to the campfire, the savoury smell of the stewed mutton the man by the gunya was eating came sailing down the breeze into his nostrils, emphasising his hunger to him, and reminding him strongly of the days in which carefully cooked foods had been his portion every day. But the wolfhound's desire for food was nothing like so keen a thing as his dread of renewed captivity, and his approach to the campfire was an illustration of the extreme of animal caution. His powerful limbs were all the time gathered well under him, prepared for instant flight. Suddenly and simultaneously two things happened. A log on the fire broke in half allowing a long tongue of flame to leap up and light the ground for fifty yards around and the kangaroo hound turned its greyhound-like muzzle sharply to one side and saw finn in the next instant three things happened together the man's eyes followed those of his dog and saw finn the dog leaped to its feet and barked loudly and finn jumped sideways and backwards a distance of three yards then the man said by ghost and the kangaroo hound bounded forward towards finn now it was not in finn's nature to run from a dog and so as the boundary rider did not move he held his ground but his recent experiences had all made for hostility and the fighting attitude toward other animals and so instead of standing upright and awaiting the salutations of the lesser creature in a courteously non-committal manner as he would have done in the old days finn held his hindquarters bunched well under him ready for springing his forelegs stretched well before him his jaws slightly parted and the lips lifted considerably from his fangs while eyes and nostrils and slightly raised hackles though making no killing threat said very plainly beware i am not to be trifled with but apparently the black kangaroo hound was not very greatly impressed it is practically certain that this dog knew at a glance that finn was not really of the wild kindred also she was a brave creature a fearless hunter and a hound who stood twenty-eight inches at the shoulder eight inches lower than the giant wolfhound it is true but even so taller bigger and heavier than a typical greyhound of her sex it may be too that the kangaroo hound was already aware of finn's sex before he knew hers be that as it may she showed not the slightest fear of the wolfhound but flew right up to him barking loudly and with every sign of readiness for fight finn growled warningly and as the stranger snapped at him he leaped aside and turning then prepared to administer punishment it was then as his jaws parted in anger that consciousness of the black hound sex came to him in the subtle way that his kind do acquire such facts and his jaws promptly closed upon space when the kangaroo hound snapped a second time finn turned his shoulder to her meekly and gave a little friendly whinny of a whine this was repeated two or three times finn evading the black hound's snapping jaws one could see that her bites no longer meant serious business they were more ceremonial than punishing but showing not the slightest intention to make reprisals true he growled low down his throat every time the black hound's jaws came together but the growl was almost meek certainly deprecatory rather than in any sense threatening finn was obeying the law of his kind where the weaker sex is concerned after a minute the kangaroo hound began to sniff curiously at finn instead of snapping at him and at this as though ordered to stand to attention the wolfhound drew himself up proudly and remained perfectly still and very erect his long tail curving grandly behind him legs well apart and his magnificent head carried high save when as opportunity offered he took a passing sniff at any portion of the kangaroo hound's anatomy that happened to come near his muzzle he was a fine picture of alertness and masculine canine pride at this time 
but though obviously prepared for any emergency the wiry hair on his shoulders lay flat now and his mouth was quite closed all this while these elaborate formalities had occupied no more than three minutes altogether the boundary rider who was a knowledgeable person with animals had been standing quite still beside his fire watching finn and his own dog with intent curiosity he had never seen a dog at all like finn but he felt certain finn was a dog and not a creature of the wild if only by reason of his own black hound's attitude also he was not looking at the wolfhound through iron bars he pictured himself hunting kangaroo with finn and jess the black hound and the prospect pleased him mightily so now he picked up a piece of mutton from the dish beside the fire and took a couple of steps in finn's direction holding the meat out before him and saying in a friendly way come on in then good dog here boy here then finn eyed the man hesitatingly for a moment the meat was tempting but finn's memories and fear were strong and he moved slowly backward as the man advanced for a little distance they progressed in this wise the man slowly advancing and calling finn slowly retiring backward and the kangaroo hound playing and sniffing about him in a manner which said plainly that he was hereby invited to make free of her fireside and become acquainted with her man the man was the first to tire of this as was natural and when he came to a standstill he tossed the meat from him to finn with a here then boy eat it there if you like but jess had no notion of carrying hospitality as far as all this she sprang upon the bit of meat and growled savagely as her nose grazed finn's she had forestalled the wolfhound and was likely to continue to do so since the law of their kind prevented him from exerting his superior strength against her then the man walked slowly back to the shanty calling both dogs over his shoulder as he went jess immediately ran to him and then danced back encouragingly to finn finn advanced with her till the man reached the fire and resumed his seat on the ground then finn stopped dead his hindquarters well drawn up and ready for a spring and no blandishment that jess could exercise proved sufficient to draw him closer to the fire seeing this the man called jess sharply after a while and ordered her to lie down beside him which she did then he cut off a good-sized chunk of meat and tossed it to finn saying here good dog come in and feed then he carefully threw the meat to a point about three yards nearer the fire than where finn stood but still a good six or seven paces from it finn watched the meat fall and sniffed its fragrance from the dry grass the man after all was sitting down and humans always occupied quite a long time in rising to their feet very slowly very warily and with eyes fixed steadily on the man finn covered the three yards between himself and the meat and as he seized it in his jaws moved backward again at least one yard the warm mutton was exceedingly grateful to finn and he showed little hesitation about advancing the necessary four or five feet to secure a second and larger piece thrown down for him by the man but again he withdrew about a yard before swallowing it then the man held another piece of meat out to him at arm's length and invited him to come and take it for himself finn advanced one yard and then definitely stopped at uh, say eight paces from the man's hand and waited as one would say thus far and no farther not an inch farther still the man held the meat and would not throw it finn waited head held a little on one side black eyes fixed intently on the man's face then slowly he lowered his great length to the ground without for an instant removing his gaze from the boundary rider's face and lay with forelegs outstretched watching and waiting and resting at the same time evidently the man regarded this as some sort of a step forward for he yielded now and flung the piece of meat so that it fell beside finn's paws the great wolfhound half rose in gulping down the meat 
but resumed his lying position a moment later still watching and waiting the man smiled well sonny he said with a chuckle you play a mighty safe game don't you you're not taking any chances on the cards i believe you reckon i've got the joker up my sleeve eh? but you're wrong cause me sleeves is rolled up but you've got a tidy twist on you for mutton all the same and i reckon it's lucky for you i killed that staked you now how'd you like plain damper just see how wallaby bill's tombstone strike ye as he spoke the man called wallaby bill flung finn a solid chunk of very indigestible damper which the wolfhound gratefully disposed of with two bites and three gulps before plainly asking for more this was finn's first taste of food other than raw meat for some months and he enjoyed it well say wolf i suppose your belly has a bottom to it somewhere what here don't mind me take the lot with this having first broken up a good large section of damper in it he pushed the dish along the dry grass as far as he could in finn's direction with all that was left of the meat cooked that evening a fairly ample meal for a hound apart from what had come before the boundary rider lay on the ground to push the dish as far toward finn as he could and then recovered his sitting position and pretended to become absorbed in the filling of a pipe while continuing to watch finn out of the corner of his eyes the dish was now perhaps three yards from where bill sat and a yard and a half from finn the man appeared to be wrapped up in his own concerns and finn's hunger was far from being satisfied very cautiously then he advanced till he could reach the lip of the dish with his teeth then still moving with the most watchful care he gripped the tin dish and softly drew it back about a couple of feet then he began to eat from it the upper halves of his eyes still fixed upon the half recumbent figure of the man who was now contentedly smoking and pulling jess's ears finn polished the tin dish clean and bright and then retired into the shadows oh, there's gratitude for you growled bill but he did not move being the knowledgeable person with animals that he was finn had only gone as far as the water-hole he had seen some thirty or forty yards from the shanty there the wolfhound drank his fill and drew back licking his jaws with zest and feeling happier and better than he had felt since the day of his parting with the master months before slowly and with only a little less caution than before finn now approached the camp a second time and heard bill say to the kangaroo hound all right jess go to him then in another moment jess came prancing out towards him and finn spread out his forelegs and lowered his great frame to the earth while his hindquarters remained erect and ready for a pivoting movement this was the precise attitude that old tara the most gracious lady of her race had adopted toward finn and his brothers and sisters years ago in the orchard beside the sussex downs when finn was still an unweaned pup and tara came to play with him without a notion that she was his mother finn's loving little foster-mother it will be remembered had been safely shut up out of hearing and scent of the pups jess now imitated finn's attitude and when his nose had almost touched hers she bounded from him sideways and backwards sometimes wheeling completely round and barking with pretended ferocity till she stooped again and repeated the process wallaby bill was pleasantly interested in watching this amiable performance but it would have impressed him vastly more if he could have pictured to himself the sort of spectacle finn had presented a couple of days before when with foaming jaws gleaming fangs raised hackles and straining limbs the great wolfhound had pitted himself with roaring fury against the leather-coated man who wielded the hot iron to an observer who had known of this there would have been something at once rather pathetic and a good deal grotesque about finn's present kittenish play with jess to lend verisimilitude to the game finn had to growl low down in his throat at intervals while jess snarled and barked 
but when finn laid one paw on the kangaroo hound's curved back as he frequently did at different phases of the game his touch for all his huge bulk and weight was one that would not have incommoded a new-born pup the wolfhound was deft and agile enough despite his want of practice in such occupations but yet by reason of his great size and the hard-bitten fighting look which the last few months had given him and the extreme wariness of his continuous observation of the reclining bill because of these things there was more than a hint of grotesqueness about his gambols such as one could not find in the antics of his playmate her sex her smoothness her smaller size and greater slimness of build combined with her evidently complete domestication made jess's foolery sit naturally upon her and indeed her movements were without exception graceful in the extreme wallaby bill's pipe had burned itself out before the hounds tired of their play and stretched themselves upon the ground jess lying a good yard and a half nearer to the fire than finn ventured but finn moved only very slightly now when bill rose slowly to his feet and stretched his arms while taking careful observations of the newcomer in the bright firelight he was just able to make out the bigger among finn's scars where the professor's irons had burned through the wolfhound's wiry coat finn half rose with ears cocked and muscles ready for the spring when bill yawned and said well wolf you are the biggest thing in your line ever i did see but it seems to me you've been having a pretty rough house with somebody what township have you been painting red wolf huh did you clear out of the town how many stiffs was there in the dead house when you struck the wallaby again wolf i bet you just made things hum old son my oath huh he took one slow step forward and finn immediately took three backward in one quick jump all right sonny who wants to hurt you keep your hair on now i only want to get the dish and wash up after your royal highness save me soul alive can't i move then you're too suspicious wolf my son i believe you're a bit of a jew and then in a lower tone my oath but someone's handled you pretty damn meanly before to-day i reckon all right wolf you walk backwards like a salvation army captain while i get the dish and then we'll both be safe and the dish'll get washed bill's notion of washing up was distinctly primitive he took a long drink of tea from the billy and then used what was left to rinse out the dish that finn had polished then he wiped it carefully on his towel and hung it up inside the gunya finn had returned to his old place by this time but hesitated to lie down while bill moved about now just you take a rest wolf said the boundary rider satirically i'm going to turn in now and i don't attack thundering great gray wolf dogs while i'm undressin not on your life i don't so just you take a rest son look at fat jess you couldn't shift her from that fire with a stock whip and jest you remember my boy that where i sleeps i breakfast sure thing and where i breakfast there's apt to be oddments goin for great big gray wolf dogs as well as black kangaroo bitches so don't you forget it wolf i'm hopin to see you in the mornin mind and don't eat jess by mistake in your sleep i know she only weighs about seventy pounds but if you're careful and don't yawn too sudden like any time you'll be able to avoid swallowing her so long son and with that the man retired to his bunk which consisted of two flour sacks stretched on saplings supported a few inches above the ground by forked sticks a very comfortable bed indeed as for finn the feeling inspired in him by bill's talk to say nothing of bill's supper and bill's fire and the black hound was something really not far removed from affection but it was nothing at all like complete trust it was the friendliest sort of gratitude and while the man's kindly talk rang in his ears something very like affection but it was not trust and finn did not lie down again until his ears had satisfied him that the man was lying down within the bark shanty 
yet it was not many months since finn had faced the whole world of men-folk with the most complete and unquestioning confidence and trust so much the professor had accomplished in his attempt at taming the giant wolf you see but well fed and cheered by companionship finn rested more happily that night than he had rested since his parting with the master it was very delightful to slide gradually off into sleep with the sound of jess's regular breathing in his ears and the warm glow of the smouldering log fire in his half-closed eyes End of chapter 19